Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you new, my name is Cam, this is Tux. On today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to post and bandage a Doberman's cropped ears. I want to mention two things before I get started. Obviously, when I first got my dog, I wasn't aware that I had to bandage, bandage his ears. I thought they just naturally stayed up. So obviously, I had to do a lot of research, I had to find out how to do it. And I really did struggle at the beginning and I needed a lot of help. That's the first part. And the second thing I wanted to mention is, here in the UK, People are very sensitive when it comes to cropped ears. I know from looking online that in the US it's slightly different because many states won't even class a Doberman as a Doberman unless his ears and tail is cropped and docked. So here, like I said in the UK, they're a lot more sensitive. For that reason, I'm just going to throw it out there and say that I'm, I'm expecting to get a lot of dislikes and a lot of hate on this video and people are going to shout out, probably throw a lot of abuse. But I really don't care to be honest. <laughs> Because I'm not here to face you or to, you know, live up to your expectations. But everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Now, with that being said, this video is going to be for those who obviously need the help and a little bit of guidance and instructions how to do it. Because when I first started, I really, really did struggle. So, if anyone finds this video informative or helpful or useful or you find it interesting, just please show some support and leave a thumbs up or a comment down below. Because, like I said, I'm going to get a lot of haters. <laughs> and with that being said, let's get straight into it. When I first started and I started doing my research, a lot of people have recommended the back rod technique. Now personally, I don't know if I just got the wrong ins I got the wrong size. I don't even know what size it is to be honest. I don't know if I just got the wrong size, but it was too flimsy for me. And even when I doubled it up and duct taped it, it didn't work. And it keeps sliding out of his ears. So I'm gonna show you my personal technique and what's worked perfectly for me. And it's my secret. I'm gonna share that with you today. So my secret, Weapon of choice is an insulation tube. This insulation tube works wonders. So not only is it a little bit more stiff, but I can cut it down to the perfect size that I need for his ears. So before you start bandaging and posting, the first step is to ensure that his ears are clean. I know his ears are clean because I gave him my back yesterday, so we're going to skip that stage. The next step is to measure up how much you're going to need. So I've been doing this for a while now on my own, so I know, I know exactly how much I need. Well, roughly I know how much I need. But I just want to mention, let me throw it out there, that when I first started, I needed my missus to help me. And even then, we both struggled. Like, he'd, he'd wriggle, he'd try and get away from us and escape. But I've become a bit of an expert right now. So I've cut two pieces that are long enough. Now what I do is at the bottom end, I make it a little bit thin so it goes into his ear canal. And then I leave the top quite thick because then it supports the top of his ear. So let me just trim it up. The next step that I do is I duct tape him to make him a little bit more stiff. After this stage is complete, what I do is I get paper tape or masking tape and I put it on the outside of it, so obviously to stick it on, I put the normal bit on first and then I go upside down so the sticky, so the sticky side is facing outwards because this part's going to go on the inside of his ear. Once them two are done, I'm ready to start posting them. So what I tend to do, what helps me, I get a couple of I get a couple of pieces of uh, masking tape, paper tape if you're in the US, and then um, I just stick them on the I just stick them onto the side so it's ready for me to cut. Because the last thing I want is when I'm in the middle of doing it and he starts wriggling or trying to escape, and then it ends up coming out. It is really annoying, so it's really it's it's really better to be prepared. <laughs> so when I get the first one, I'll just. Keep him here so he's a little bit calm. Easy. Right. When I'm doing it, he tends to. Tr he always tries to lie down. <laughs> so I always try and put his head on my on my leg. But when it doesn't work, he ends up going down anyway. <laughs> so the way I do it is, 
I pull his ear up, I look in as much as I can, so I push the thinner side into his canal and then I just hold it like this. I get one piece of tape, I stick it onto the actual thing first so it holds it in place. I pull his ear up and I go around the bottom end first. You want to make it quite tight but not too tight. Because if it's, if it's too tight you won't be able to breathe but if it's too loose it's going to end up coming out. Get another piece. Now do you see why it's, it's better to keep them ready and prepared. And if you're wondering guys why I use masking tape or paper tape, it's because when I take them off, it's not going to rip all his hair off. Of course it's going to take a little bit of his hair off, but not as much as using a different sort of tape. So that's the first one done. Now I'm going to give you guys a tip. If you leave it on with just the masking tape, and he doesn't like it in there and he starts trying to scratch it what you're best off doing is using the tactic that I use is by putting a layer of duct tape on top of the masking tape but be careful not to grab any of his hair on his head so you putting a layer of duct tape not only secures it, it makes it a lot stronger but it makes it scratch proof because he won't be able to rip through that or take it off, his, take it off uh, by shaking his head around Next one, same procedure again. Make sure you pull his ear up when you're doing the bottom. Sometimes the tips might be hanging up, hanging over the actual insulation tube, and what I what I tend to do is I just get another layer of tape and I just put it there as support. Now that I've posted his ears, I need to do the bridge to keep them together. What I do is I just get a long piece of duct tape, which is obviously not going to rip if he scratches it. So I grab one end first, I stick it onto this side, I go around the front, I pull his ear up, pull his ear up where it's going to connect to. Make sure you keep it a little bit slack when you go around at the front and the back because it's going to stick together so you don't want it too tight. It's kept it a bit loose and then what I do is you pinch it together. And there you have it. So at the end, I just squeeze his ears, I squeeze the bridge just to make sure everything's tight. Jobs are good. Enough. So there you have it guys, that's how I personally post and bandage my Doberman's ears. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to attract a lot of haters and a lot of abuse probably from this video. So for those of you who do find it informative or useful, please hit the thumbs up and show some love. In the next video guys, I'm hoping to answer a few questions that you subscribers might have. So if anyone's got anything they want to ask specifically, please feel free to do so in the comments down below on this video right now. Because I don't know when I'm going to be making that next one, it might be next week, it might be the week after. But feel free to leave your comments down below. Otherwise, Jason mate, is it Jason Barr, um, one of the subscribers on this channel. I think you'll be the lucky one that only gets your questions answered. <laughs> Yeah, so until next time guys, stay safe.